Tracy Harris, welcome to the Play Big Brand Bowl podcast. It's awesome to have you here. Woo! I'm like <laughs> high-vibing and ready for this chat, Suze. I'm excited. I know, I know. And I mean, I've followed you online for such a long time now. It feels like a long time. I actually don't know what a long time is. Like a year or two, that feels yeah. like a long time. And when it comes to the digital world, like five minutes is a long time. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. There's probably been an algorithm update while we're speaking. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sad, isn't it? We measure our lives in algorithm updates. Anyway, uh, well, for anybody that doesn't know, your business is Mums with Hustle. And you are somebody that I see online building community uh, all the time, which I love to see because the Connection Exchange is all about community as well. But tell us a bit more about Mums with Hustle. Like, when did you start it? What was the catalyst? Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, yeah, it feels like forever ago that I started, but it's actually not like in normal years. Um, it's really only just coming up to three years in September. Um, that I launched Mums with Hustle. So I do have to remind myself of that sometimes when I get stuck in my ambitious Mm. mother mode. I'm like, oh, hang on a minute. In that short amount of time, you've built a community of like in excess of 50,000 women. Um, You know, you've launched a course three times. You've done online challenges. I've got like multiple digital products. I've helped so many people and made so many beautiful friendships along the way. Um, So I do have to remind myself that it has actually only been like almost three three years. Um, But I guess the catalyst for it was that I had always been following online entrepreneurs and really learning everything that I could about online business, particularly marketing. Like that just, to me, I don't know. I just love it. I love everything that there is about try building. Yeah, Yeah. you know, and connecting with people. And I just knew that I wanted to do something in the space of content marketing because I love writing. I love speaking. Clearly, um, I probably spoken 1,000 words already. Um, And, you know, I love people. And by trade, I guess, I am actually a teacher. Like I, I was about to say, what were you doing before your entrepreneurial life? Well, I was a teacher for 10 years wow. and like even in, you know, an executive teacher in a school as well. So leading teachers and a large part of my role as an executive was around community building. So I was a religious education coordinator in the last few years of my career and that saw me planning lots of events um, where I could also not only build that relationship with the students, with the staff, but also the parent and wider community. And I just loved that. And I was always from day one, when I first had my, my beautiful year three class in 2007, I was that teacher that was using technology to enhance and support learning. So I was that go-to teacher for other teachers when they would be like, oh, can you show me how to use that program or can you show me how you started your teacher blog or, yeah, like it was just always there. So I look back and I connect all of the dots. So it's no joke. I recorded my first podcast in 2007 with a bunch of nine-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> And where is that episode? I know I need to pull that out. Do you know what the topic was about? Um, British colonization of Australia. That was our topic. Wow. And I just had a really inspiring principle that was so encouraging of using technology innovatively in the classroom. And um, so I really jumped on that. That was my first year of teaching. But then I took to like blogging um, so that parents could stay up to date with what was happening in Mrs. Harris's classroom. (laughs) And now we've got class dojo apps where we get photos from teachers and stuff like that, which I love. I know, but like all of this in the dinosaur years of teaching when I was doing it was not available. So it was like so clunky and, and yeah, quite technical. Um, and then, yeah, I, I just, I've always loved tech, the online space, people and anything to do with communications. So I feel like I've finally 
landed totally on purpose with what I'm doing. I'm still teaching, but I'm teaching an audience of hungry, ambitious women and I'm teaching them largely online marketing. Yeah. And so when you started Mums with Hustle, did you have a really clear idea of what it was going to be? I knew that it would be um, a place where I would educate and empower women through knowledge, but also with community. So I knew that that's what it would be. That was the wider vision. I did not know how I would introduce income streams. I did not know that I would have an Instagram course as like a flagship program. I didn't know that I would host some events along the way. Um, and we're building some other really exciting things at the moment as well. And I, so no, I didn't know all of the pieces of the puzzle, but I had the desire to serve and connect all of these like-minded women um, through an online platform because even in my own life, I was really lacking those types of people in my life. Like I just grew up like most people with, you know, traditional parents that tell you, you need to work, study hard, hard work equals success um, and happiness. And like, once you study something, you should commit 100% and probably die in that first job that you get. (laughs) (laughs) So my poor mom is probably like, she's trying to be as supportive as she can be. We given her worldview and her own upbringing um, but saying but that, very- your husband is now in your business, so you're not doing too bad, Josie. Well, do you know, I have to give him props. He is the catalyst for opening my eyes to this side of living and, and just on a human level and also just to creating your own business and your own life by, life by design. It kind of started with him. He's always been like this, like... He had an he had an ABN in high school when he was like fourteen, and it was going to be like creating so websites. Cute. He wanted to create websites for brick and mortar stores because he was like, "Oh my gosh!" And this is, by the way, I should give you the year of this. This is like two thousand and like oh, sorry, not two thousand, uh, <laughs> like nineteen ninety nine. Okay. He's like had his ABN and he was like, I'm going to help brick and mortar businesses get websites because I can build websites. Well, he couldn't really, but he knew more than, than what the regular person did. And he was like, and this will be my business. But I guess he didn't have mentoring or anyone around him to really help fuel that fire. So it, it came to a quick end. But it, he never stopped. He just always felt like he wanted to create his own thing. And then we met and he was always like, oh my God, Tracy, you need to be doing something online. You're like this people magnet and you love teaching and blah, blah, blah. And let's, let's build something together where you can have the impact. You can have the impact that you want. And I was like, okay, cool. So we did it (laughs) together. (laughs) <laughs> oh he should just clone himself oh, he'll make a billion dollars oh, yeah no he's he's just my biggest cheerleader he has an uncanny ability to see potential in people and then to have like real powerful goal setting coaching style conversations that's awesome. what he did in his career um at apple and and he was that motivating person and a great leader and I'm lucky to have him here. It's for me to like have real cool conversations with. Yeah, that's amazing. And I think yeah. that that's, I think that that's pretty rare. Like, I mean, I think that uh, like my partner's super supportive, but I don't think that that is uh, a strength of his as far as being really enthusiastic. Generally. Oh, we are nerds. Yeah, oh, that's so great. Yeah, romance to us is sitting here, either doing like an online course or shooting video together or building landing pages. <laughs> That sounds romantic to me. Totally. (laughs) Awesome. Very good. So now today we are talking all about building community. And like you said, you have built an amazing community of women, especially in your uh, Mums with Hustle Facebook group, which is now sitting at like 15,776 or something like that. Uh, I just checked. Okay. I'm thinking, what number? I knew it was around the 15K. So... Talk to me about why you started that and what you wanted to get out of it when you started it. 
Okay. Well, basically I started this group when Mums with Hustle was about six months young. And at the time, again, there was nothing like it. There were no support groups or community groups where like-minded mothers with an entrepreneurial mindset, um, whether they had actually embarked on a biz journey or they just wanted to, um, there was nothing really there in existence for them. There were um, some groups for women in general, but nothing that had niched specifically to, well, what is it like to do this biz thing as a mum? Mm. So, and I had this great traction um, on my Instagram account. And so I was like, I would really just, again, it's coming back to the vision. I would really like to not only empower people with the knowledge and the value that I'm providing through my content, but also through a community. That's such an important thing for me. I truly believe learning is like best done in community and you are the company you keep. So surround yourself with quality people. Um, and I just saw Facebook groups as a great opportunity for me to give that back to my audience and people were jumping over. Like as soon as I sent the first email to my tribe, people were entering. And I think at the end of that first day, I had over a thousand people in there. Um, and it's just grown steadily ever since from ladies just recommending it to their friends. So I guess first and foremost, it's about community. It's a space for people to connect with other like-minded mums with hustle. It's more of a personal space on Instagram. We all know each other by business handles, but in the Mums with Hustle Biz Club, we know each other as women and as sisters. So it's this space to come and connect and collaborate with each other or promote yourself or... Um, ask for help and support, share that real tricky customer situation that you might have going on. Um, but yeah, it, it's a really beautiful place and it has an amazing culture because of the ladies that are in it. Yeah, absolutely. Culture is all about the people. So when did you start your Instagram then? Was it at the same time? So did you start them at the same time? No, I actually started first with Instagram before I even had the website. Um, I think if I scroll all the way back, it's probably, I probably had the web, oh, I had Instagram growing for four to six weeks before I actually launched and said, hello, my website is here. You can go out mm -hmm. and check out. I think I had three podcasts to start with um, because I wanted to batch create three because you know, it's, it's great to launch with more than one episode because mm -hmm. if people love it, they can batch or binge listen and then they're hooked. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to launch with just one episode. I'm going to give people like a few that they can just like yeah. sit there and love. Um, but I started the tribe building first and that's my whole business philosophy. I'm all about not building the thing and expecting everyone to be like, oh, that's so amazing. You have this really fancy website and a really great offering. I'm just going to come and buy it because yeah. people may start like that and have a really nice launch, but then usually there's like a dip in the roller coaster and then they're trying to find an audience again and, and trying to cut through the noise. So my whole philosophy was lead with love, show up with value consistently, build a very targeted tribe and then launch and introduce a way, an offering that helps them with what they need most. That also obviously aligns with my passion, my purpose, um, and, and a product that can satisfy their need. Yeah, absolutely. And so how has it supported your business? So you've obviously brought in this amazing community that is super engaged. How have you sort of seen it change your business and support your business over the past three years? The Facebook group in yeah. particular? Um, so the Facebook group mostly is about community. So in that regard, it is more of a brand awareness thing mm -hmm. for me. And for a lot of people, it's their entry into this, this beautiful thing that is Mums with Hustle. It's sometimes their first touch point because Facebook has either recommended the group to them um, because of its size or because they've had girlfriends say, oh my God, there's this thing called Mums with Hustle. You need to get in. Um, so it's largely brand awareness, as I said, another touch point for people to connect with me, but also the essence of Mums with Hustle, which is the brand. It's that the brand is that essence. It's that thing, that culture, that vibe 
that people feel and they just know if they gel with it and if they want more or if it doesn't fit well with them and their life and business values and then they're like, it's cool, I'm out of here. Um, so it's been really great in that regard. I, do, I don't overly promote in there. I let the ladies know when there's things coming up uh, like learning opportunities, like if mm-hmm. I'm launching a challenge, I'll of course let my beautiful tribe know that that's happening. Um, I'll try to drop in when I've launched a new or broadcasted a new podcast episode that they may like to go and enjoy. But it's not the Tracy show in mm-hmm. terms of like me getting in there and like just teaching people stuff all the time. I've got other Facebook groups for that. Um, that's obviously my paid student community group. Um, and I've had Facebook groups for the ladies that have come to my events. Um, that was in my first year of business. I haven't done any events since having my second bub, Jude. I've been more so focusing on doing workshops and speaking at other people's events. Um, but yeah, easier. This, yeah, easier and just so fun. And often like my tribe shows up. So it's like, oh, hey, girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, so that that's kind of what the Facebook has the Facebook group has been primarily. And so through the Facebook group, and I guess just through building community, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook, because I know you've got a massive following on both. What are some of the lessons that you've learned along the way when it comes to community building? Like well, if you were going to advise somebody else yeah. on what you've learned, what would those lessons be? Number one, consistency, like be there for your people. There's a lot of people out there saying, you know, that they've got a really big why for their business, but often their why is not really aligned with their true desires for the impact that they want to have for the life that they want to have themselves. And so they come up short, like it is really, it, it, it requires a lot of you, a lot of your time, a lot of your energy, a lot of your knowledge to be able to build a tribe that wants more of you, to be able to build a tribe that trusts you. It takes a lot. I think on Instagram, I've done in excess of 1,400 posts and I have showed up with value in every single one of those posts and I've written them myself and they've like really come from a place of heart and I'm posting live every time like I'm not posting through another app because everything I put out is timely and relevant to how I feel in that moment. Um, So that I think that consistency of content and consistency in showing up is really important. But also I just want to tell people that you can't be all things to all people and that is actually your power. So repelling people is just as beautiful as Um, attracting people Um, so it's okay to be your quirky self if anything that is your power as I just said so um, yeah just be authentically you because the best thing is when you meet people in real life and they're like oh you're you're just the same like it's it's you're so um, relatable I love it when people say that to me I'm like yeah like this is just it (laughs) this is me Um, So I think that's why it works. Like relate to people through truth and because people can smell it when it's anything other than that. Yeah. And we were just talking before we started recording the podcast about meeting people and them just being normal. And it's just nice. And normal to me is just easygoing, relatable, can have a normal conversation. It's not awkward, you know, which is, which I think is great. And I think you can build a culture in a Facebook group um, like that as well, where it's just kind of, let's just be real. Uh, I think that that's amazing. Yeah, totally. I love it. No shade, no like hidden agendas, just transparency. Now with a Facebook group of over 15,000, there's got to be pros and there's got to be cons as well. So I know that Facebook groups have kind of gone through their peaks and troughs as well. I know that uh, at the very beginning, I was part of a lot of groups. I was running groups. Uh, I've sort of pulled back quite a bit from it, but I do enjoy some. So as an owner of a group uh, and a sort of a community builder and community manager, what are some of the pros and cons that you've sort of been through with the group? 
Oh, absolutely. From the get go, it was, you know, people that come into the group and then obviously don't read the rules or they're not aware of your brand's culture because there are a lot of Facebook groups and, and they're all, none of them are the same. Like in some Mm. groups, it's totally cool to go in there and drop links to your own content just on the wall or promote yourself or go in and say, Hey, I'm looking to buy party bags for my child's birthday. And that's totally cool. But it's like, okay, well, the Mums of Hustle Biz Club has some very, has a very different purpose and it's all communicated in the pinned post. So obviously there are a lot of people that come in and they just don't read that pinned post. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have to be willing to kind of defend your brand, defend that culture that is so hard to build and people want it to be protected. Um, a lot of the compliments that we've always gotten from the Mums with Hustle Biz Club is that there is no place like it. And so we're like, okay, we need to really protect that. And so that meant being vigilant in scraping the wall for posts that, you know, went against our group rules um, and deleting those posts without like almost unapologetically because Mm -hmm. the onus is on the group member to make sure that they're doing the right thing in whatever group they're in. Um, So so do you have uh, help with that? Do you have community managers or administrators or VAs that I do have help now, yes. So I think it got to like... Oh, 4,000 or 6,000 before I was like, I can't do this yeah. <laughs> because I was like, oh no, 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 no. A smart business person would be like, okay, Tracy, this group is important. It's serving a great need, but it's actually not even income generating. So it's like it, to grow your business and in order to help more people, you do actually need to put your efforts into some income generating things. You can't just live on this free Facebook group forever, making everyone happy. Um, so I was like, okay, I need a team. Um, and that allowed me to also have some real savvy ladies come on board and they could learn about Facebook groups as well. And they could also become visible, um, in as authorities in their own space by admitting in the group too. And we're just friends. Like, it's just so nice. Like we've got this, this beautiful friendship that exists amongst us as admins. Um, so I did have to get these ladies in and they're so good and everyone's kind of picked a role that suits their skill set and what they feel comfortable with from time to time. We'll rotate roles so that it's shared. Um, But yeah, no, it's amazing. We've got a little side admin group where we all get in and kind of talk. Yeah, we get in and talk things through um, and just we keep each other consistent in how we are managing the group. And if there's any grey areas, we'll get in and we'll share, you know, whatever is the the topic or the thing and we can talk about it and be like, oh, well, that's a no and, and yeah, or we'll help each other phrase, phrase things to get back to someone. Um, yeah, so how no, many people have you got helping with the management of your group? There's six of us. Wow. Yeah. And it's nice that way because, I mean, I've got some really lovely admins that are always like, I don't feel like I'm doing enough, Tracy. Like, what else do you want me to do? And I'm just like, no, no, no. I don't want everyone to be permanently running this free Facebook group. Like, they are all beautiful, savvy business owners in their own right. And they've got families. And so it's really important to me that they're not overburdened and that they love doing this because yeah, it's, it's, it's a free, it's a voluntary role. Mm. So we've all just got small tasks each and we just all kind of do that box, um, do that task. And then, yeah. And how have you managed the balance between free content and paid content? Because I think that's been a big question that a lot of people ask. And I was having a, a conversation with somebody the other day and they were saying, I just get a lot of questions in the free group. And obviously that's part of my paid course. Uh, and she said, it's just really hard to manage that. Like you obviously want to give, but then you've, you don't want to, I guess, be giving everything that you're you're then teaching in a paid realm. Yeah. Well, I mean, 
I give till it hurts, basically. Maybe you're asking the wrong person. I'm all about giving and, and overgiving. Yeah. Um, as a little piece of guiding advice, I would say it really helps to start with the end goal in mind. Like if you know what your course delivers or what your membership delivers or your ebook or whatever it is, it's nice to then work back from there because you do need to be leading with value on every single touch point. So if you've got a course, then how are you going to get people to that course? Okay, well, it's going to need some sort of launch strategy. So for me, it was a challenge. Um, and that is like, I have people emailing me like, Tracy, I heard you do this Instagram challenge. Like, when is it coming back? Well, it's an annual event because it is so high in value and it's happened for 2018. So sorry, everyone, if you're yeah. listening and you're excited. Um, so it's like, okay, know the course and the transformation that exists there for the people, then think backwards, okay? How are you going to get them to know about the course? You're going to run a challenge or you're going to have some sort of video series or webinar or whatever it is. And then you've got to know, okay, well, what can I give them in that that is going to add value to when they come into the course, they're going to get even more. Yeah. Um, and then it's also like, okay, so they've come into the webinar or the challenge or the downloadable or whatever it is, you also need to be showing up with value in the emails that you then start sending them. So it's this, it's a lot of free value. And then maybe you're giving free value in your podcast as well to get people to sign up to the freebie or free value on your socials or free value in your group, or you're going live on Facebook every single day for two weeks in your list building phase um, before you launch your thing. And I do understand <clears throat> sorry, I do understand that it can feel like you're just giving so much free content, but it's about there's always more where that came from. I don't believe in, in holding back. I know there's the entrepreneur with the mindset of, I'll just give them a little bit, like get them from A to B or just give them enough so that they can scratch that itch and hold the rest back. Well, I'm all about making my free content be as good as or even better than other people's paid content. Yeah, that, absolutely. That's my thing. So I'm like, I want you to come into the challenge and say, that was so good. You should be charging for that. I love that. I love it when they say that. Some people actually get upset when the challenge disappears and they didn't finish it because it's a live challenge. So it's gone after five days. And then they get sad and I'm like, they're like, I, I had to work. So I didn't get to do the last two days. And I'm just like, that means it was it was something really great and really valuable and it, it's it's not around forever so it's like it's gone like it is an online event and um, now I love giving people the opportunity to sink their teeth into something so meaty yeah. don't hold back don't hold back people <laughs> absolutely you've got I, so much knowledge I was like, about to say run out. I also run out. I also think uh, I also think that when you do teach. There's different levels. Like there's yes. different levels of detail. There's different levels of implementation um, and helping people. There's more to... support. You can yeah. offer obviously with a paid program. Yeah. You yeah. can scour someone's blog and podcast and download every freebie and go through every one of their email funnels and, and try to piece it all together for free. But who's got time for that? Yeah, I was about to say that's what people pay for is the convenience and the access. Yeah. So the access in a very... Uh, supportive directed yeah framework like, yeah. yep yeah totally absolutely. very good okay and so when it comes to your community because i know that you're in there and you're connecting with people all the time what do you think the biggest needs are that you see in your community right now because i'm sure that it's changing all the time with business as it does oh totally and um i was talking to my husband so funny you asked this i was like we were talking about the facebook group and i was like oh you know like different themes and threads of conversations pop up from time to time. And for the good part of a year, like the hot topic was always copycats. And people were really worried about competitors popping up in the market or people popping up and doing something similar. And so that was like a real big, big trending topic for so long. <clears throat> and there's less and less of that now. I, I don't know what that's about. Maybe... We've all come so far in terms of our own mindset and abundance mindset and it's okay. Like that actually means you're in a good niche. There's demand there. It's okay. Um, it's about how you cut through the noise and stand out and being clear in who you serve and, and your offering, making your offering be a little bit different or a little bit better 
um, so that you stand out. But yeah, so there's definitely um, themes that pop up from time to time. It always comes down to the entrepreneurial growth mindset, I feel. Like it's not about understanding the latest Instagram algorithm. It's not about understanding SEO or, you know, having a really cool blog or a large Facebook group. It's always, it always comes down to the entrepreneurial mindset because it, to grow your own business, particularly a personal brand you and in the B2B services as well, like you need to be able to show up almost be relentless because sometimes it's just, it's just a game of who can be bothered more. Like, I know that sounds really hard. (laughs) No, I 100% agree. I just think it's hard. Like it's it's so hard. hard. People don't talk about how hard it is. Yeah, because we can talk about it a bit because I think it's really important is that you're not always going to feel like it. And some days it's harder than others. And Sometimes you've got a whole lot of stuff going on outside of your business, especially as mums sometimes that we've got to deal with. And it's hard to be on all the time. Yep, totally. And if you worked for someone else, you could call in sick. You know, you could be, you could even go out all night before, have a bit of a bender, rock up to work. Oh, remember that? Yeah, (laughs) and like just kind of bludge your way through a bit. Um, have a, has a, have a snooze under the desk. I mean, I couldn't really do that. I was a teacher. Can you imagine if I did that? Um, but, but like you could kind of do that. Um, yeah. you can't do that when you are your own boss, when you're an entrepreneur, you need to show up and bring your A game every time. And you need to flex that mindset muscle, whether it's your approach to abundance and generosity in business and giving free value all the time, like you need to be okay with that. You need to be okay for when you put something out there and it's not perfect and people don't like it. You need to be able to respond to Bounce someone that. that, yeah, respond to someone that writes a narky email about a product or something like, yeah, it, you need to be able to take hard knocks and you need to be able to show up when you don't feel like it. Yeah, absolutely. And I do think the relentless comment is really accurate. I think that, you know, like we were talking about bouncing back and when things don't go the way that you planned. And I just think it is such a huge learning curve when you start a business, even when you've been in business for a couple of years. Like I was listening to another podcast a while ago and they were saying that, you know, they are super successful now and a massive organised old business. But for the first four years, they weren't making a profit. The revenue was good, but the profit wasn't there. And I just think we do sort of expect it all yesterday. And when we put something out there and it doesn't go gangbusters, it's like, wow, that didn't work and this is not working and it's not worth it and all of that sort of thing, which I think is really interesting. I think that there has been a bit more of a, I don't know, romantic view on entrepreneurship Mm -hmm. Uh, and that, oh, you've got your business and it's amazing. And whilst it can be amazing, it is freaking hard. And it's so so intense. I'm like rocking in a corner. (laughs) Pass me the wine. (laughs) Oh, yes. Yeah, it's not, it is an unconventional path. Nothing about it makes sense. And you have to be okay with that. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. But, yeah, so I guess a little message, a big shout-out to the ladies out there that are running your business and you are, you know, bouncing back. Well done because not everybody does it. Yeah, and I just want to add, Suze, if I can. Mm, Absolutely. Um, On your point of, like, you know, going through years and years sometimes of not turning a profit, like that just is part of the experience for most entrepreneurs like before you go up there's always a down so I think you have to you have to expect that and you have to bring a a level of patience to growing your own business that you would if you were going to go into a career in in any other form so specifically speaking like for me to become a teacher I had to go to uni for four years and I was poor for those four years and I, I love the correlation. That's yeah. so true. But society was encouraging of that and supportive of that. And my family and my friends and everyone around me was like supportive of this 
four-year poverty because they knew that I would get to be a teacher one day. So no one ever threw any doubt or shade my way and ever tried to throw me off my game. And I remember looking longingly at people that would sit at Gloria Jeans and order a $5 Frappuccino and think, I can't afford to buy that. And I would cringe when I get my uni book list and think, oh my God, how much is it going to be? Yeah. I can't afford that because I only get paid, literally, there was a stage when I was going through uni, I'd get paid $62 a week. No joke. Because I would only get a four-hour lunch shift at Target. That was it. Yeah, and I was a Coles checkout chick. Oh, and I think I was about $86 a week. So Woo, I was obviously raking really raking it in then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just think but everyone was really supportive of me like investing in my learning and it was okay if I wasn't earning money because it was going to pay dividends in about four years time when I got a job. Mm. But then we don't apply the same patience to entrepreneurship and small business. And we don't give the same encouragement to family and friends that say, I'm going to have a bit of a career break from the thing that society has expected of me. And I'm going to go out on my own and it might take me a year or two years or three years to really get momentum Mm. and systems and processes in place and a business model that fits well and makes me happy and generates income and changes lives. So yeah, I just, we all need to slow down a bit. Yeah. But I think that that is such a great reality check generally is that if you are in business and you're making money, but you're not making a massive profit, Um, Even women I know who I think are super successful, I know only started paying themselves recently and they've been in business for a couple of years, but they've got these big booming businesses with, you know, so many people involved and, and they are happy and they are doing so well. But I also know that they've said to me, you know, we've just started paying ourselves. So I just think that reality check is so needed. I just think it's really important to know that, you can get there if you can if you keep going yeah. and you learn and grow and get the support you need along the way and 100%. Yeah, and just have honest conversations yes. because this, what we're talking about right now is probably going to give someone just permission to cut themselves some slack. Yes. Just breathe a little bit and be like, oh, okay, cool. Like I'm not a failing small business owner or entrepreneur because I haven't replaced the income that I would have made in a regular nine to five. Like it is okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I also think that you just, sometimes you just need to do what you need to do. So if you need to get a bridging part-time job to make so that you can continue to build your business and grow it, then do it once again. So many people I know, I mean, Jess uh, from Collaborosaurus and I talk about this. I saw that you were in a picture with her yesterday yeah. and her and I have spoken about this. So she was a barista for like, since, yeah, she like last year. And yeah. I think she's, you know, she gave that up. Obviously, Collaborosaurus is doing amazingly well. But I just think it's okay to get the barista job or to do the thing on the side if it means that you can grow what you need to. My husband so wants to be a barista. He's just like (laughs) hanging for me to say, please go down to the local and get yourself a job just one day a week because coffee is his passion. So, but yeah, that that's part of his reason for even leaving his corporate job is so that he can go and just go, Oh yeah, I was a barista once. (laughs) I really think you should let him live his dream, Tracy. I don't know why you're holding him back. Well, he does the home baristering. Like he legit roasts scenes here at home, orders them green from different parts of the world and like... Multi-talented. Yeah, he's a creative. He's a creative. Well, there you go. Well, maybe that can be, maybe that can be next year. It could be a new revenue stream. You could be... He's just going to do a pop-up Carl's Coffee. You never know where he's going to be at the next business. (laughs) It's so in. It's so in right now. He just has to buy a car, brand it, and he's good to go. Yeah, he'll be at every biz mum convention known to men. (laughs) Awesome. So speaking of biz mum convention, which I'm sure will be a global dominant uh, conference at some point, um, what is your focus for Mums with Hustle moving forward? What's happening in your world and what are you focusing on? Oh, Suze, we're in an exciting time. Like the, everything's shifting. Um, I started this year saying and telling everyone that my word of the year is growth because I felt like 
that needed to happen. Growth for us here as a business, like obviously my husband joining me here and being a partner in the business now, um, but growth for the ladies, for my audience and in my offering as well. So I'm ready to take people to the next level. So we're building some exciting things. I unfortunately can't say exactly what they are. <laughs> How annoying of me. I, I know. Um, but it's, I've reached a point where I, I was just at capacity for my one-on-one coaching mm. and things like that. So yeah, new offerings are on the way where I'm able to help more ladies grow their own online marketing presence in an authentic way that also empowers them to just be uniquely themselves. I'm basically going to teach everyone what I have done to date and how they can kind of find the confidence to do that in their own way. So it's going to allow me to help a lot more people and I'm very excited. Oh, brilliant. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I really have enjoyed this chat. Thank you. You're very easy to talk to. No, we can just we can just natter on for hours. <laughs> but where can people find you if uh, they are looking for you? We will have all the links. But for those who are driving in a car or walking down the street as they listen to this, where can they find you? Oh, I've kept it super easy for everyone. So basically, Mums with Hustle is all you need to know. It's mumswithhustle.com. That's where the podcast can be located as well as like a plethora of blog articles, loads of free PDFs and guides and and trainings live there as well. And so do my paid programs and um, services, courses, all of that. But I love social media and connecting with people and showing up like my true self. So follow me on Instagram at Mums with Hustle, my Facebook page at Mums with Hustle, um, and, of course, the Biz Club, which is the Facebook group, Mums with Hustle Biz Club. Awesome. Tracy, thank you so much. It's always a joy. Yeah. Can't wait to, um, you know, see where your biz goes to next. You're always, like, energetic and doing great things. Well, it's funny because my word this year was consolidate. Woohoo! <laughs> so it was like less, like less of the and noise. Have you even done um, that in your personal life? I was just about life? to say we were talking about decluttering. I feel like I've decluttered my life and yeah. my business or I'm still in the process of decluttering both, but it feels good, it feels cathartic and it feels like I have more space to grow me. Yeah. That's amazing. Instead of things. When we put those words and intentions out there, it's like all of the actions follow suit. Like just thinking about what you've done with your home and and the Mm. decluttering. It's amazing. Yeah. Very good. Thanks, girlfriend. (laughs) We'll speak to you soon. Bye.